Hello, today I will be giving a class called Doing Business in Brazil. My name is Matt Jordan and I have lived and worked in Brazil for the last four years. But I have been coming here on business for over 10 years. Uh, currently I'm a real estate agent and a business professor. I got my education, uh, an international MBA from Thunderbird University in the United States. Basically, this class is a two-hour overview on the economic history, the current economic situation in Brazil, and the future of its economy. This class is perfect for one to ten people, and we can do it on Google Hangouts and or Skype. And if you're learning Portuguese and you want to learn more about Brazil and its economy, this class is perfect for you. So let's get started. So let's get started. Once again, the name of this class is Doing Business in Brazil. And the objectives of this class are as follows. Number one, uh, to give an overview of Brazil's economic history, where it is currently, and the future of Brazil. Uh, number two, uh, I will cover the key economic sectors or industries and the products within those sectors and industries. We will look at the changes in Brazil's economy in the past as well as the current changes. Uh, there was just an election here and Brazil is, is undergoing once again uh, some big uh, structural changes to its economy. We will look at the challenges, number four, of doing business in Brazil as a, as a foreigner. Uh, we will look at U.S.-Brazil trade relations. We will also look at uh, trade relations between Brazil and China and Europe. China is a very big player here in Brazil. Uh, throughout the presentation, I will present uh, some of my real life uh, business experiences. And of course, we will take time uh, throughout the presentation to stop when uh, you can ask questions and we can discuss certain points. Okay, so Brazil's current situation. Uh, Brazil is a, a brick, and the brick countries are Brazil, Russia, India, and China. And sometimes people use the word BRICS, and the S stands for South Africa. That, uh, that country is sometimes included in the BRIC countries. So what is a BRIC country? Well, typically, um, it's an emerging economy with fast growth. And in 2008, we had the worldwide financial crisis, but Brazil, after that, uh, uh, that time, grew at 7.5%. Uh, now, in 2010, it slowed down to 4.5% percent, but this is still quite significant. Now we are at below 2% and people are saying that with inflation we could be close to zero. So this will be a big challenge for Jilma and her administration in the next four years. But some key statistics of Brazil in, in a, a brick country. Basically uh, the GDP here is 2.4 trillion. In the US it's just over 16 trillion and in China it's 8 trillion, just to give you an idea. The GDP per capita or per individual is 11,000 US dollars per year. Now in the United States, it's 44 plus. So that gives you a nice comparison. Um, the, the trade volumes, previously there was an account surplus. That means they were exporting more than they imported. But not now, now it's, uh, it's, it's more even because Brazil is importing more. They have opened up uh, uh, to imports. Uh, they have a very healthy foreign reserve of US dollars close to 400 billion USD. And a lot of this is with oil exports and some of the other exports, but mainly oil. The economy is the seventh largest in the world. It's just behind England and France. Okay, so uh, it is a significant player in the worldwide economy. And its population is the fifth largest uh, in, in the world. It's around 200 million. And uh, uh, the United States is just over 300 million. So that gives you some, some perspective. Next slide. More on Brazil's current situation, uh, continuation. Um, recently, uh, in the last 25 years, but in the last, let's say, decade and a half, there's been increased foreign direct investment and trade, in particular with China. It's their biggest trading partner now, bigger than the U.S., but it also trades with Japan, Holland, historically has trade, traded a lot with Holland, uh, and then Argentina, which is a regional player. It's a very, very important trading partner, Argentina, just to the south. But what, what's encouraging uh, uh, foreign direct investment and trade, increased foreign direct uh, investment and trade? 
Well, we have a, a higher confidence in the, in the market. Very important. Um, Brazil uh, was more of a socialist economy for many years. Now it's privatizing, becoming more capitalistic. So that gives confidence to local markets, regional ones, and international. Uh, its banking system is more liberalized, so the flow of money in and out is much easier. It's not as bureaucratic. Uh, it has a very robust stock market. Actually, the stock market here owns the Chicago Board of Trade because Brazil is uh, agriculture is very important. So that purchase really uh, increased the, uh, the cap rate of the stock market here. Uh, the monetary policies that it has, it is continually trying to uh, control inflation because it's, it's an emerging, growing economy. So it's very important to control inflation. And then it's foreign exchange, uh, not uh, uh, being too high or too low. Um, when it's lower, exports are high. Uh, and that helps uh, the, the Brazilian economy. Very important point here, the reduction of uh, external debt. Um, historically, Brazil had high debt. A lot of South American countries did, but Brazil has been paying down debt uh, very aggressively uh, for many years now, and that is, that is really helping their borrowing position uh, for, for growth. Uh, it has a lot of regional and international political clout. Regionally, it is the biggest uh, player in South America. Politically, it has a um, strong position on the uh, World Trade um, uh, WTA, World Trade uh, Association. So uh, it, uh, it's, it's definitely influencing trade policies worldwide. And then of course we just had the World Cup and we'll have the Olympics. So that's bringing a lot of attention to Brazil and its economy, its culture, its people, etc. Okay, so that basically finalizes my snapshot of Brazil's current economy. But in my two-hour class, I will cover in more detail uh, Brazil's current economic situation and the major economic uh, drivers be behind Brazil's economy. We'll look uh, at the history of Brazil's economy in more detail. And maybe most importantly, we're going to look at the, the future challenges that uh, Brazil faces uh, post um, uh, this uh, election that just took place. But if you're interested in learning more about the past, the, the present and future of Brazil's economy, please sign up for this class. Uh, it's a great supplement to uh, your Portuguese studies if you're taking Portuguese. And I thank you for your time and, and hope to see you soon.